Hey, welcome to our class tonight. The first class we're doing tonight is meals and mixes, and it's kind of a part two to what we talked about last month of um, using your food storage or losing your food storage. Um, we, when we talked about that last month, we, sorry, I have to use glasses this month, I'm like getting old. Um, we talked about how important it is to start using your food storage and learning to build your 90-day supply. And I'm hoping that tonight's class is going to give you some really good ideas of ways to do that that makes it easier. In my mind, I like things a little bit coordinated, and so I like the fact that if you use some of these methods that I know that I'm going to have enough ingredients to make everything that I want to make. And so hopefully tonight you're going to get some ideas and um, try some things that are delicious that you're going to want to go home and make for your own families. So we're going to start off talking about mixes. And we're actually going a little bit out of order because one of the things I'm making, we're going to pop in the oven so it'll be fresh out of the oven when you taste it at the end of class. So we're going to be starting with um, a couple of different mixes in this recipe. We're going to be making a quick, uh, I mean a white sauce mix, which is really, really easy. And I know you don't have the recipes tonight, but you will be getting them in your emails so that, um, oh, you're going to have to find someone with a computer if you want to get the handouts. Because that's why I send them out, they're, they're, there's usually a lot of pages of recipes. So the white sauce mix itself, which looks like this, um, is just made up from yeah, two cups of instant dry milk, two cups of but, uh, butter powder, some salt, some pepper, and some flour. And you just mix it up. And when you're making the mixes, you can do them a couple of ways. One, you can, the way I did it yesterday because I was cheating, was um, using my mixer, my electric mixer. And I just dumped everything in and turned it on and it mixed it all up really good and then I divided it up. But the other way that you can do it is to just put it in a large Ziploc bag and just, you know, squish it around and move it around until it's all mixed up. So that works, you know, too, or in a big bowl like this that has a tight-fitting lid and you can just shake it all up and then it mixes it too. It doesn't work so good if you have to put shortening in it because, or butter because it, you know, clumps up and you have to do a little bit more work. Okay, so to make, we're going to start with the white sauce mix. And so to do that, I actually use the juice from my, um, from my just mixed vegetable, cans of mixed vegetables, and from canned chicken, and so it made three cups because I'm doing a double recipe. So, I just put it in the pan, and then I'm going to, oh, I have to open this up, okay, and then, uh, oh, oh, there we go, okay, so, I already mixed all the stuff in here, so this has quick, quick mix in it, and it also has, oh, when I opened the wrong one, that's the wrong one. There you go. All right, hold on. Let's go. That's just plain quick mix. This one has the spices already in it, so it has um, chicken bouillon and some sage and some thyme and some salt and some pepper and I think one other thing, which I can't remember off the top of my head. And I just put it in so it has a little bit more flavor. So, it's all in. This is just my white sauce mix and my spices that are all mixed up in my little pre-measured, pre-packaged bag. And I'm just going to dump that into my water. And I'm using a whisk just so it doesn't get clumpy. And I just mix it in. And you just bring it to, and this is the rest of my water. And you just put it in and you're just going to stir it up. It all it's okay to use an electric one. Sure, if you want to. You've got electricity. <laughs> Go for it. You, you don't really need to. You When I did it yesterday, I didn't even use a whisk. I just um, used a spoon. This is actually what we had for dinner last night. It's, you know, I can't feed it to you if I haven't actually eaten it. Sometimes <laughs> I do do that, but... <laughs> The soup that you're going to get to try in a little while, I just made today and tasted it. And Linda came over and I made her taste it too because I just wanted to make sure I liked it. Okay, so I'm putting this in. I'm going to just bring it to a boil. And then it just takes a minute to thicken up. And it's going to get all really nice and thick and make this really nice white sauce chicken gravy that we're going to mix into our 
vegetables and chicken, which I already have mixed up in the bowl. And I just put a can of chicken in, the chunk chicken, and I just kind of broke it up with my hand so it spread it out a little bit. So while this is heating up and going to thicken up, we're going to just make the topping now. So the topping is made from Quick Mix, and Quick Mix is just like this Quick. It's just a homemade version of, um, of this Quick, and I opted to put my shortening already in it, or butter. Um, when you are making your Quick Mixes, or any of these mixes, you have the option of doing, you know, butter or shortening, or to use dehydrated butter or shortening, or combinations of those, depending on what you have on hand. Just know if you're using butter or shortening that the shelf life of them is going to be less than if you're using dehydrated stuff. If it's dehydrated, it'll probably store three to five years. We're going to talk about storing later and how to do that so it stores longer. If you're using butter or margarine or shortening, it's like one to two years. Although I just made some cookies a couple months ago that I made up like four years ago that had shortening in them and they were perfectly fine. So, you know, I'm just giving you and these kinds of things you want to make sure you store in the house. So, to make my um, my topping, it's just from this recipe is actually from the Bisquick. Used to be on the back of the Bisquick box, and but you'll see up here. I have I bought a Bisquick cookbook because I thought that would be perfect for the mix and milk class, and it has so many recipes in it that use the quick mix kind of thing. So, this has two cups because I'm doubling the recipe, two cups of the, um, the biscuit mix, and it also has an egg. And you could use, okay, this is already thickened. That's how fast that happened. Okay, it's not, it just barely started boiling and it's already all thickened up. So let me show you. See how nice and thick it is now? Mmm, delicious. Okay, I'm just going to turn it off smells really good. I'm going to tell, tell you a secret about powdered eggs. I, how many of you ever have used powdered eggs before? Okay, not a few of you. Okay, powdered eggs, this is what they look like. I can, I, I will pass around a little thing so you can see what they look like. They're just whole eggs that have been like, you know, mixed up like scrambled eggs and dehydrated and turned into a powder. And they're, they have been um, pasteurized, so they're safe to eat. You don't have to keep them in your refrigerator even after they're open. And, but they tend to clump because of the egg yolk in them. The egg white ones don't do it, but the egg yolks do. So in order to make it so I don't get clumps of eggs in my stuff, I just use one of these little tiny strainer things. And I just pour it in and use a spoon, which I thought my hand was okay. Use a spoon and I just push it through and it makes it all nice and it's pretty fast to do. Just push it all through and it makes it all nice and, um, what's the word? Sifted. Powdery again. Yeah, sifted. So this was two eggs. And because, now you could use with this recipe if you didn't have powdered eggs, you didn't want to use powdered eggs, like you don't want to use them for food storage, you can um, use fresh eggs and because I'm using this original recipe actually calls for using fresh eggs, so I'm using powdered, one tablespoon of powdered egg and two tablespoons of water to make up for my fresh egg. So it's really easy just to substitute your stuff in and out, and the more you use it, the easier it becomes to you. And you'll find that different, um, different kinds, can you even see this? Different kinds of um, products will, um, you know, we'll use differently. One of the one of the um, blogs that I read about this, a lady who's been using hers, is that when she's using her dehydrated stuff, she uses half the amount that the recipe calls for. So if it calls for a cup of shortening, she's only using a half a cup of shortening and then adding water to it. So I just mixed up my powdered ingredients all together. I'm adding in water, and it takes um, two-thirds to three-fourths for a double recipe. It's just going to make kind of a... Oh, yeah, that was too much. Maybe I'll need to mix it up. Okay. And a little bit more. That's good. Nice. Okay. I really did make this last night, but... It was like 1 o'clock in the morning when I was typing all this up. So who knows? Maybe they had it enough room. Okay. So it's going to make like a runny, kind of like a thick pancake batter kind of consistency. Thinner than a normal biscuit, but you know how that 
see how that is? Really thick painting. And then I'm, oh, I forgot to do the other part. Okay, so that's that. Now I've got my um, gravy mix. And I'm just pouring half into each one of these. One might be saucier than the other, you just never know. Okay. And then I'm just going to mix it up real quick just to get the gravy all throughout the um, throughout the vegetables and the chicken. We're just making a really quick pot pie is what we're making. Now look how fast that was. Now imagine if I had to like take all those ingredients out of my cupboard and put together my biscuit mix and put together my gravy mix, it would have taken a lot longer to put that together instead of just the minutes that it took to put this together. So it is all mixed up now. And I'm just going to take my funny looking biscuit mix and I'm just putting half on each one. You could, if you were at home, just do this well, this is a double recipe because we're, you know, there's a lot of us and we all want to taste it. And if you had a big family, this is probably how much you would be eating, which would make like a 9 by 13 pan. Just a little bit thicker. So you just take it, put it on the top, and then you're just going to pop it in the oven at 400 for about 30 minutes until it's all lightly browned. It's going to smell really good as we're sitting here. And that's it. Oh, look how fast that was. That's faster than going to a fast food place and getting there. <laughs> and so much better for you. The thing that's really fun about mixes, besides the fact that they are really fast and they help rotate your food storage, is that you can customize them. Like that had salt in it, but if you were on a no salt diet, you could just leave the salt out. Or if you liked, my, my son said when he tasted it last night, he said, I said, how do you like it? He said, good, but it needs some it needs some more spice. He would have put like hot pepper flakes or something in his. So you can customize it to your family's needs and likes by it, by, you know, tasting it and customizing it so it'll taste really good. Okay, let's talk about some other kinds of mixes now. Oh, did you guys all want to see the egg? I told you I'd pass some more for you. getting ready to teach this class, I got together with Linda and I went through all my recipes and everything that I could find about um, mixes. And there's a lot of stuff out there. It's all over the internet. It's in all these books up here. All have mixed stuff in them for either meals or just regular mixes. So there's a lot of things to choose from. And there's a lot of different kinds of mixes that you can do, more specialty mixes. Um, but I wanted to focus on some things that I thought that most of us would probably use as the basis of our of our mix part of our program and wanting to put things together. So one of them we did, well the first one we did was just the quick mix that obviously can be used for a lot of different things. How many of you used, have used this quick through the years and made lots of things with it, right? Pancakes, waffles. My husband's very favorite shortbread is made from a Bisquick um, recipe. And it was really fun going through the Bisquick I set up one night and went through it all and marked all these recipes that I thought would be perfect for food storage and, and easy kind of meals that came from that cookbook. And there's a lot of those recipes that you can just find online, but of course you'll be getting recipes, so you'll be able to you know, start experimenting. The cool, another cool thing about doing mixes and meals, these kinds of mixes and meals, is you could take your family favorites and start converting them into that. And we're gonna talk about that in a little while on some of the things that I have done with that. So another basic one that we talked about last year, but for those of, you, those of you who didn't come to the Malcolm Cookies class, we did a basic cookie mix. And it was amazing to me. I knew that you could do cookie mixes. Um, I've seen them for chocolate chip cookies. In fact, Costco right now has one for like $6 for a bag not much bigger than this um, to make 
cookies, and it was interesting because there was no date on it, and it has butter and eggs in it, so I was wondering how they did that without you know, kind of any kind of expiration date. But um, the thing that's really cool about cookie mixes is you can make all different kinds of cookies. And when we did the cookie class last year, we had like eight different kinds of cookies all made from this basic cookie mix. And when you get your recipes, I think there's about 20 different cookie recipes made from this basic mix. So if you have this on hand, you just need to add two or three other ingredients to it, and you're able to have all these different kinds of cookies made from the same basic cookie mix. So tonight you're going to have, um, get to taste some peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. And um, she actually made it from powdered peanut butter powder. Peanut butter powder, not powdered peanut butter powder. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's really powdered. And I don't know how many of you have ever seen that, but it is just peanuts that they've ground up into a powder. It tastes just like fresh ground up peanuts. And she just put that in with her flour, mixed it in with her dry ingredients, and added some extra water, and we have peanut butter cookies in there. I love peanut butter cookies. And then she also made um, a ginger, a ginger kind of cookie back there. So you have a couple different ones. I figured you'd all eat chocolate chip cookies plenty of times in your life. Might want something different. So I took that same basic cookie mix recipe, and I put together my own package for molasses cookies using the basic cooking recipe, adding the other things to it. So now, instead of taking this and having to add stuff to it, I've got it all in one bag. So I just have to open this one. I didn't have the shortening in it, so I'm going to add shortening and an egg and some molasses. But everything else is in the bag. And so you can customize it if your family likes three or four different kinds of things. And I can tell you, I used, um, we have been dieting a lot last year. And um, we had some friends coming over for dinner, wanted to have something for dessert, but I didn't want to be tempted with making something from scratch. And so I had a chocolate chip cookie mix just like this sitting up in my, in my little 90-day supply cupboard. And I went and pulled it out, dumped it in, added some water to it, and my husband said, these are the best chocolate chip cookies I've ever had. I'm like, Rob, it's my, it's my chocolate chip cookie recipe, but it's been sitting on the shelf for three years. So I know something about that time sitting on the shelf that it tastes better than him. I'm not really sure. Um, old chocolate chip cookies. But it was literally, I had the cookies in the oven in like three minutes. Well, as long as it took for the oven to, to heat up. But I actually turned the oven on, then went and found it, came back and, you know, did it. It was minutes and I had cookies in the oven. So, so fast. You need to bring, you know, somebody's sick, you need to bring meals into him, into them. It's just a quick way of doing it instead of taking everything out. And frankly, I can make chocolate chip cookies pretty fast just because I can almost do them in my sleep. But it's still nice just to be able to open it and dump and to have some variety. Okay, so cookie mix, I thought that was a good basic kind of mix to have. Another one is quick bread or muffin mix, which basically are the exact same thing. There's a little bit of difference. I did a ton of research this week just to see the differences in them and decided they were pretty much the same. So um, I use them pretty much interchangeably. I mean, if you think about a quick bread, it's pretty much the consistency of a muffin. So you can do it either way. But a basic um, quick bread or muffin mix, the same idea. When I taught this class a few years ago, I took a muffin mix, a uh, basic quick mix. The recipe I had made enough for three quick bre three breads, and I mixed up I mixed up the mix, just all of it together in a big bowl, and then I actually just put the mix in each of the pans, and then put a cup on one of them. I did um, apples and cinnamon, so I had taken some dehydrated apples, rehydrated them a little, put some cinnamon in it, and I just mixed it right in the pan. The second one I had taken some pumpkin that I had dehydrated, some pumpkin, just pureed pumpkin that I dehydrated, put it in a bowl with some hot water and it rehydrated and I put pumpkin and chocolate chips in one. And the other one I had some raspberry chips that I put in. So within like less than five minutes I had three completely different kinds of breads that I popped in the oven and then you guys got to taste them that night if you were them. But anyway, so fun. And the same thing with muffins. These mixes make 12 muffins or a, you know, one bread. So that's how that works. Okay, any questions so far? So we're rolling right along. Yeah. So if you don't have electricity, mm -hmm. um, how do you bake? In an apple box oven, which we're going to be doing in June, June and July. June we're going to learn how to use them, and in July we're going to make them. 
So those two back back vents. But yeah, it's really easy actually to it's so easy. All you need is charcoal and apple, apple box oven and you can bake just like your regular oven. Or a solar oven too, which next month we have a bonus class next month. We're doing the regular class on the third Thursday. And then on the Saturday, I think it's the Saturday after that. I can't remember what it is exactly. Um, we're doing the, um, one of the owners of a solar oven, the, the owner of a solar oven company is coming to give us a solar class and he is excellent. You will learn so much about solar cooking. Okay, so another one is cornbread mix. Now, I'll tell you the difference in these. Okay, you have cornbread muffins back there you can try tonight. Um, you can make up, I actually have a cornbread recipe that I really, really like. This was just a mixed recipe that I found, but I definitely would, if I was packaging my own, I would be using my own recipe because we love it. It's like cornbread cake. Um, but so easy, same thing, you're going to just, this one, all you have to do is dump this in a bowl, add a cup of water, and pop it in the oven. So, so easy. And if you wanted to do like we did it did tonight with our... You know, just make it a topping. You just water it down a little bit more, pour it over the top, and you've got cornbread on the top of whatever you're cooking. So another one. Now, the difference in these two. If you buy, I happen to love Marie Callender's cornbread mix. And so at Costco, it usually only comes on sale once a year now, usually around Thanksgiving time for some reason. In the winter they have it, not in the summertime. So a couple of years ago, I stocked up on a whole bunch of these. This one wasn't from Costco, you can tell because it's too small of a bag. But um, these are not packaged for long-term storage. And because they have shortening or butter in them, I'm not sure which they have in them, they go rancid actually fairly quickly, six months to a year, and you will open them up and they will smell rancid. So if you're going to buy Marie Callender's cornbread mix because it's your favorite kind and you just would rather do that, you need to repackage it into something that's airtight so it will store longer, or just make sure you're rotating it really frequently. In a little while, we'll talk about repackaging, how to do that. Um, we already talked about the white sauce mix, right? Okay, let me see what other kinds of things you're going to be doing. Oh, spices. I found a website that had, I don't know, 40 different kinds of spice recipes and seasoning recipes that I'm really excited about. So your apple cinnamon muffins you're getting tonight have a homemade apple spice seasoning in them and dehydrated apples. And the dehydrated apples are from 1999, and they've been in my garage the whole time, not cooled. So you'll see that your dehydrated stuff can store a long time, even in your garage, which I do not recommend, by the way, but that is where I did have it stored. And it got moved, and now it's back again because it's going to be cool in there now. But um, just so you know that things store a long time and that you can use them. And I have had lots of times people tell me, oh, I threw out all my food storage because it's, you know, more than five years old. Never do that. Always open it up and taste it. If it still tastes and smells good, then you are free to eat it and it will not make you sick. So keep that in mind. All right. Um, some other kinds of things we're going to talk about tonight are, oh, donut holes. I had to do something with a quick mix besides just the topping. I was thinking, what can I do with a quick mix? You know, I can make pancakes, we've all eaten those, or biscuits, that did sound very exciting. So I started going through the cookbook this morning and I found this recipe for called Bows and Buttons. But basically, it is a donut bowl. This is without the topping on it. So all you do is take the, the quick mix and you add a couple of other things to it. I can tell you that. You add some more sugar and some cinnamon and nutmeg and um, some an egg powder or an egg and some water. And you mix it up and it's going to make a dough that you're going to make a really soft dough. So it'll be about like this. You just knead it like five times and not really that need, much kneading. And I can tell you what not to do because I learned with my first roll. When you, you just take off a hunk about the size of a walnut and you need to roll it really good. If it's not, if it's rolling like this where there's too many cracks, you need a little bit more water. The first time I thought, oh, this will be fine. And when they cooked, they like all unfolded and they didn't really stay very round. They're kind of lumpy looking, but they still taste really good. And then when you, you bake them, they come out looking like this. And um, you're gonna just roll them in some melted butter and then roll it in sugar. And I actually prefer the sugar, sugar cinnamon topping on them. 
anyway, you get to taste these too. And I, I, they're addicting, so you have to be careful. About them. But they're, but they're really, really good, and they're really, really easy, and are just a really fun thing to do with your kids. And they just taste really good. And these were actually made. You'll notice they're not really white. They're half whole wheat, half white flour. So they're a lot healthier than just you know getting a white flour kind of you know donut hole that you would buy at the donut store. And these probably cost. I think one recipe made about 24 of them. It was like a dollar, and maybe actually probably less than that now that I think about it. So really, really easy, really, really fast. Um, okay, let's see what we can talk about here. Let's talk a little about advantages of mixes. Um, besides the fact, obviously, we've already you know been demonstrating that it saves you a lot of time to if you've got some mixes done, and it really does not take any longer to put together one mix as it does to put together three mixes. So sometimes what I've done is while I'm making a meal for dinner, for instance, pasta fagioli, which is one of my favorite soups, if I'm putting that together, I will measure out two other recipes of the seasonings and put them up, put them up in a little bag and then put together a little thing for another couple recipes of it because it just doesn't take very much longer to do that. Um, it also saves money because you can buy things on sale to make. You know, last month we talked about doing menu planning and figuring out, okay, I want to have chili once a month in, this, in the, in the um, winter time. What do I need for that? You know, I need, like, say, three cans of beans. When they go on sale, then I can buy 36 cans of beans, and I'll have enough for my, my six months of um, chili. Um, because you're not using any preservatives, which is a big deal when you're buying mixes, they all have preservatives in them. You're not putting preservatives, so it's a lot healthier. You can also substitute out different kinds of grains. You can make them multi-grain or, you know, doing whole wheat. Baked goods are a really easy thing to sneak whole wheat into without your family even knowing. And um, if you've got, we talked about dietary needs, like you're diabetic, you can't really have sugar, you need to have more whole grains. It's really easy to make a mix like that where if you buy one on the shelf, you, you're not getting any of that consideration. Okay, let's see. It's fast and... Okay, let's talk a little about, because this was kind of an interesting thing to me when I started looking at price. Was it really cheaper for me to make a mix than it was just to buy a mix? Because I can go to Wimpo and buy some apple cinnamon muffin mix and some blueberry muffin mix, and how did that work out in price? Well, a lot of things, that you, a lot of mixes you get, not all, but a lot of mixes you still have to add egg and shortening to. And so we did do um, a price breakdown of cookie muffin, cookie mix, muffin mix, cornbread mix, and the farmhouse soup mix, which you're going to try. So to make one recipe of the cookie mix, which makes about 24 to 36 cookies, it was $1.22. Um, so if you bought cookie mix, it's going to be more than that. And plus you're still adding egg and oil or shortening to that. The muffin mix was $1.02. The soup mix was $4.61. And the cornbread mix was $2.19. Um, so anyway, that was just the breakdown. So sometimes it's cheaper to buy it, but once again, you're back to, you know, can you customize it for your family? So you have to kind of weigh that out and see if you just want to buy mix or not buy mix, or maybe you just don't want mixes at all. You have to decide for yourself. Okay, let me see here. Do that, do that. Okay, when you're substituting, we talked a little bit about, about, a little bit about this already. But when you're substituting, you can substitute butter or shortening or margarine all pretty interchangeably in most baked food recipes. Um, sometimes it's just preference. I personally like shortening in my cookies. I like the consistency better, but I like the taste of butter. So sometimes I use butter flavor Crisco if I'm going to do that. Um, but I also can substitute dehydrated shortening if it's something that I want to store a little bit longer, specifically in my mixes. And the same thing with powdered shortening, I mean powdered um, butter and powdered margarine, there can just be used interchangeably. And powdered margarine is a lot cheaper than powdered butter. Um, eggs versus egg powder, we talked a little bit about that. You also can use egg whites and whole eggs interchangeably in your, um, in your mixes or in, in your cooking. Um, as far as milk goes, milk is a really easy thing to change out for in your recipes. If you have a recipe, for instance, the, the 
um, quick mix already has powdered milk in it. So you don't need to, if your recipe in the Bisquick book calls for, because theirs must not have milk in it. This particular Bisquick, maybe real Bisquick doesn't have powdered milk in it. That's what I'm guessing. But um, it doesn't have powdered milk in it. So if it calls for milk, I just put water in mine instead of doing the milk. If I, any recipes, I do not have milk at my house. I only use powdered milk now, especially in cooking. You cannot tell the difference. But I just measure my water and pour some powdered milk in until it looks like milk. I don't even measure. So, um, but let me do tell you a difference. There is a big difference between instant milk and regular milk as far as measuring goes. Instant milk, you need twice as much instant milk as you do regular milk when you're putting it in a recipe. So if it calls for non-instant milk and all you have is instant, you need to double your instant milk. And if it calls for instant milk and you only have regular, you only use half as much. You catch on? So um, what I'm trying to tell you is regular milk is a much better value, for your, especially for your food storage. You get more in a can, you get, um, you get a third more in a can, and it goes twice as far. So you're getting much, much more regular milk in a can. Okay, so some other kinds of things that are, are mixes that I would really like to have, and that is things like cake mix. I mean, cake mix. What are you talking about? We're talking about cake mix. Cake mix is really good. Or, uh, I have a friend that's actually working on getting a good cake mix recipe because most of the ones out there, the cakes are pretty heavy and flat, so she's working on getting a really good mix recipe for that, um, which of course I will be sharing with you as soon as she comes up with it. Um, a pancake mix, a whole grain pancake mix, you can buy them on the shelf you know, at the store that um, you add water to, but because they're whole grain, they do not store for very long the way that they're stored, so you either can make it yourself and when we do the uh, great grains class later in the year, we'll teach you how to do a pancake mix just in your blender. You don't even have to grind up your wheat first. You just put your whole grain wheat in there and with your other things and turn it on and it turns it into pancake mix for you. It's really easy. And you can do any combination of grains you want. Um, and Alfredo and cheese sauces are also really good to add to your storage. You actually can add powdered cheese or regular cheese to the white sauce mix and make your own cheese sauce just with what we've already done by either adding powdered cheese or um, or parmesan cheese or just regular shredded cheese and then you can make a cheese sauce. Um, you also can do a stovetop stuffing mix. I love stovetop stuffing. That's like my favorite stuffing. I know that that sounds lame but I'm telling you it's the truth. So I found a recipe for that so I'm excited to try that. And there's a lot of rice mix recipes. So those are like all not main meals that we've been talking about so far. So now we're going to move over to the main meal side. Okay, any questions that we have on what we talk, talked about so far? Can I make a comment? Yeah. <laughs> I was writing in my diary today and I wrote, I hope it never gets so bad that I don't eat my cookies. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, cookies are a comfort food. That, that um, cookie mix that we talked about earlier, you even can make brownies with that. Now, that is a good comfort food. Okay, so let me get over to the other side here. I'm going to do show and tell now. Not really show and tell, but I'm showing and telling. So I'm doing it wrong. Okay, because that's sort of like show and tell, isn't it? All right, let's talk a little bit about ideas of things to get to make your main meals. Because let's face it, main meals are going to be the, the foundation of your food storage. You know, you're not going to fill up on pancakes or muffins. You're going to fill up on something that's going to fill your stomach and keep you you know, full for a while, and that means main meals. Um, main meals to me are, I love eating, so I love main meals, but I want them to, I want them to taste good. I don't want to just go, you know, get something. I remember reading this blog about this lady who um, had this, she started doing this, okay, for her family, and so she got some books, and she got a bunch of recipes, and she started putting together meals and bags. She had them sealed up like this, and um, in meals and bags, and then I was I'm like, that is such a cool idea. Her her goal was to get 365 days of recipes and our meals stored up for her family. And then as I'm reading along, she says, okay, so for dinner tonight, we tried this bean and something soup, and she said, and we even liked it. And I'm like, you made 12 of those, and you didn't even try them first. That does not seem like the best idea to me. So I thought she'd already tried them. You really need to look at some of these recipes and try them first.
so that you know if you like them, because if you like them, then, yeah, then make 12 of them, and you've got one for every month. That is such a great idea. But um, if you haven't tried them yet, maybe not such a good idea, because you might not really like it. Of course, it would give you something to eat, but you might not like that. Okay, so these are a bunch of different places that you can get ideas from. Dinner in a Jar that we talked about last month. Um, she has 30 different recipes in here of things that you, she stores hers in jars. We live in earthquake country. I probably wouldn't do them in jars. I probably would put them in bags. But it's the same idea where everything is together um, for a main meal. These gift in the jar books, there is a bunch of them. This is soups and chilies. This is a really good one. These are really great because this is holiday fun. It had a lot of really fun ones in it. Um, this one too is very much like this. It's a it's a uh, meal. It's a mixed one. It has a lot of different stuff in it. But these are great because they're already like made for food storage. I mean, even if you do, I don't know how many of you used any of these, but the recipes are set up so you put all this dry ingredients in a jar and then you add some things to them. I call them add-ons. They call them all different kinds of things. But even the add-on things, for instance, this one's for Italian-style bean soup. And the, in the jar goes dried beans, huh, part of our food storage, dried onions, some, some bouillon, some um, spices, and some grated Parmesan cheese, and some pasta. All things that store for a long time. And then, in addition to that, you add water, some pasta sauce, some spinach leaves, which you can do dehydrated, and um, and that jar of stuff. So all you're adding to it is water, pasta sauce, and baby, baby spinach leaves. Like I would care for a baby, but anyway. And put it in a pot and cook it all together. So that is a great way to do these meals in a bag kind of thing because it's already all dried. So it's like done all the thinking for you. But there are other things that you can do too. Um, you can get things like this if you wanted to. This is very similar to what we're actually going to be eating tonight, the chicken thing that we're trying. But it comes in the thing. It has everything in here, including the chicken. It's about $4. Um, it feeds about four people. I don't know how many. It's supposed to feed five minutes. I don't know. Make it in five minutes. I don't know how many it's supposed to feed. Yeah. Five. It says five, but it really doesn't feed five. In fact, in our house, it would probably be two or three, depending on who was eating. Um, so for four dollars, it, it's all contained. This is great, like for my son that's away from home because he can dump it into a pot. He could actually probably eat this out of the jar if he needed to do that. But once again, not packaged for long-term food storage. Yeah. That was going to be my question. Yeah. How long did that last? No. Well, I'm going to open it up and tell you. Okay. So this is the sauce mix which is not packaged for long-term storage, and the rest of it's in cans. So this is, the, um, this is the chicken stew. So this has the sauce and the chicken and meat all in it. There's two cans of that. It's like what I put in my can over there. This already has the white, the gravy already in it, and then this is just the biscuit mix that you mix it up and put it on top. So if you just repackage this, you could get with store for a long time. For a lot longer than it would if you didn't repackage that. Yeah. Where did you get the, the bags that you stored in? We're, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay. Okay, so something like this. This is made by Bear Creek. They make about 15 different kinds of chili and soups. I happen to really like them. This will serve about 10 people. It, it has pretty large servings, but it's not packaged for long-term storage. So what I could do is just take this and put it in another bag and seal it up and then it would then it would store for you know it would multiply like this probably only stores for a year or two and I could make it three to five years by just repackaging it. Okay now are you taking it out of the bag and put it in? No, I could just put it in just bag. like this. Okay. Yeah. If you put it in the freezer, it'll uh -huh. store for several years. You mean keeping it in the freezer? Keeping it in the freezer. Yes. You can do that, but I my freezer space is precious to me, so I don't want to keep stuff. Now, I will tell you, and I tried to do some research on this because I found it in a lot of different websites that said that anything that has flour in it, 
If you put your flour or your mix when it's put together in the freezer for two days before you package it up, that it's supposed to store a lot longer. Now, I could not find any anything on the internet that could tell me why they thought that was. The only reason I can think it is because sometimes flour has bug eggs in it. And so, but if you're packaging it airtight, that's going to knock that off anyway. So, um, I couldn't find any other reason, any logical reason that I could think of why freezing my flour would do, make any difference at all into the storage life, um, especially if I'm doing it for two days. Keeping it in there is a whole different story. But if you're only putting it for two days. Now, it will kill anything that's in there, and then you can package it, and you know, you know you're not going to have bugs in it. So, if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. But I think if you're packaging it airtight, you're not going to have trouble with that anyway. Okay, um, this this hamburger helper, you can hear the pasta is loose in here. This is not packaged for long-term storage, and bugs will get into your pasta left in packages like this. So what I have been doing is just, if you like hamburger helper, just opening them up, dumping, dumping my um, pasta. This actually would fit in a bag this size. I could dump my pasta and put my put my seasoning packet in it and seal it up and it would store for a long time. And I would actually cut out my instructions and put it in the bag with it so I don't have to rewrite it. And these bags are, these are, these are a bag we'll talk about in a minute, but these bags or these bags too are both reusable. So you can open them, you know, seal them at the top, open them up and then reuse them again later on. So you're not having to replace the bag every time you do it. Okay, now, you see this one? This one I did probably four years ago. This was an autumn soup recipe that was my very favorite soup growing up that I got at a really society dinner one night. And um, I, except it had all fresh stuff in it and I converted it all into dried stuff. But you'll notice there's air in here. It's gotten, vegetables sometimes are pokey and they'll poke just a little teeny tiny hole you don't even see and then it's sucked and then it's, now air can get in and out to it. So this will not store as long because of that. Now what you can do to keep that from happening when you're using fruits and vegetables that are a little bit sharp is just to put them in a Ziploc, like a, a freezer Ziploc bag first before you seal them up and then, it, and then that won't happen. Okay, it just protects it. You don't need to do it with the soft stuff, just with the pokey stuff. Okay, another way that we talked about last month is converting family recipes. Now this was a recipe that we ate at Karen Tolman House as a matter of fact. And um, I loved it. And so I called her and asked her if I could have the recipe. We, Rob and I, ate it two times that following week because we liked it so much. And I thought, I could turn this into a food storage recipe. So I have made it into um, a dinner in the bag kind of meal, meaning everything isn't already dehydrated and dumped in. And well, I still dump it all in, but some of it's not dry because I like the spaghetti sauce in it. So I have all my seasonings and everything all um, already pre-measured and I have the recipe in here. I just stuck it in here. Oh, I have an empty can of tomatoes just so you can see so it's not too heavy. And then it has a couple cans of beans, a can of chicken, and some and a jar of spaghetti sauce that's, you know, that's the size. And I just take it all and dump it into my pot and cook it, which wasn't the original recipe, but it still tastes really good and adding some water to it. And it just all cooks together. So this was a way, and I love this, but now I know, oh look, I've got, you know, my meal all ready to go, and I know all the ingredients that I need are there, instead of going to make it and I'm missing some key ingredient, which used to happen to me a lot. So I like this idea. Do you have to package everything? No. If, you want, if I wanted to make the pasta for Jolie, and I wanted to have it once a month for six months, I just could get enough of those cans and have them on my shelves and just keep track of that. This is just a really easy way to keep track to know that I have everything I need for the one meal. Um, I also took all the dry ingredients and packaged them up airtight so that this will store a lot longer. And this has got dehydrated carrots and, you know, and celery and onions, which the recipe calls for, and it's just all in here. And you can mix and match. This recipe had hamburger in it. Had hamburger in it originally. And so, but I have done it with chicken. I've done it with um, sausage. I love it with sausage. I can sausage and it's so good and the sausage is already cooked so I can just dump it in and it gives it all that really good flavor. So you can kind of mix and match with, you know, your own recipes. The idea of this class for you to understand that you can be incorporating what you're already doing 
and incorporate your food storage into that so that you're used to doing it, you know how to do it, you're comfortable doing it, and you start accumulating the other kinds of things to be able to make your meals with. Because we really do are supposed to have a 90-day supply of emergency food or food that's you know easy to make, and this is the easiest way to do for me to do it. It's a lot harder for me to think about six months of food or three months of food, but if I can break it down into, oh gee, I really like pasta fagioli soup, I'd like that once a month, I can multiply that recipe by six, and you know, I, I probably want that in the summertime. So for the winter time, multiply it by six, and I've got it once a month, you know, just by multiplying by six. That's a really easy way for my brain to process it. Okay, so let's talk about storing. And I actually have this plugged in so you can see how easy it is. Okay. So, first of all, you're going to be trying tonight farmhouse soup. You almost could call it, you know, have you heard of dump cake? This reminds me of dump soup because it seems like it has everything in it. And um, so it has originally the recipe called for fresh. Um, okay, first of all, it has dried, it had fresh onions in it. So it had fresh onions, parsley salt, a bunch of seasonings, and then it has barley, split peas, rice, lentils, macaroni, um, and then fresh carrots, cabbage, tomatoes, and celery. So those have all now been substituted out for dehydrated things, and that's what we're trying tonight. So it's got, I was telling Linda when we were putting this together, I probably, if it was me making it for my family, would not put rice and barley in it. I probably would put one or the other. And I am not a big split pea fan, um, so I might not even put that in, and my husband would love it. So, um, but that's the thing about getting these recipes, you can mix and match what works better for your family. We, the original recipe called for um, spiral macaroni, and we substituted that with um, one that kind of is like a variation of spiral. It's still got all the pretty colors in it, but it just, it's what they had at one and it was easy. And I forgot to bring my little funnel. These are a lot easier to fill in your cans if you have a canning funnel. And we filled a bunch of stuff before we came, and then I forgot to bring the funnel with me. So, I'm going to try to put it in here and see if I can do it without spilling too much. So these are all the ingredients already measured out. I just want to show you how easy it is and now. Oh, this has got the tomatoes in it, so it's not coming out. All right. So that has tomato thing. That has tomato powder. And how many of you, I brought tomato powder for you to see too. Can you pass this one? How many of you have seen tomato powder? Sort of a... So some of you have. Tomato powder is nothing but, can it come with that and just pass around? Mm -hmm. um, so you can see it. It's nothing but tomatoes that have been dehydrated and then ground them into a powder. And, oh, they're so good. And I remember a few years ago, um, Sylvia Bevan had a whole bunch of um, cherry tomatoes in the garden and she didn't know what to do with them. And I said, why don't you just dry them? So she did, and then she made her own tomato powder. Now this recipe has dried tomatoes in it. If you didn't want to do dried tomatoes, because they are, I got the dehydrated, or not the dehydrated, the dried tomatoes, the sun-dried tomatoes from um, Winco, and they are a little bit moist. That's why this is sticking so much in this one. And so for me, if I was gonna actually make this up and store it on my shelf, I would, is it funny? I would dry them again in my dehydrator and make them a lot drier. Or, really what I probably would do is not use dried tomatoes. I would still put the tomato powder in it because it thickens it, but I would use canned tomatoes. Just because I like that better. So, okay, so this is what it looks like. This makes, there's four, it makes a gallon of soup. You add three quarts of water to it and it makes a gallon of soup. Now there's a couple of things that you can do. You can, if you wanted to, put an oxygen absorber in here. Because I'm putting it in this kind of bag and I have a sealer that is going to suck all the air out, and so I'm not going to do that. So all I do is take it, I kind of straighten it out so it's not wrinkly. There's a little, like, um, canyon, a little indent in here, and I'm putting the opening of my bag there so that that that's where it sucks the air out from. And then I just lock it down on the side and I press vacuum and seal. And it just sucks all the air out and it seals it. So it's all done. The other thing this machine does, and I didn't bring my attachment for it, 
is that I can seal things in jars with this also. There's a little hose that comes with it. it I have um, attachments that go on the top of my regular and wide mouth um, canning jars and it sucks all the air out. Now you just wait till the light goes off. It's sealing right now. You can't hear it sealing. Now it's all done. That fast. And look at that. It's like a little brick. This is not the plastic that comes with it. This is from a company called DC um, Enterprises, and um, they make a thicker plastic, and you can buy them in um, boxes of 100. You can also buy it by the roll. Um, it's a little bit cheaper by the roll. And they have, like, I think four different sizes. I brought, well, that one size I just showed you, which is like this size. They have a little one, this is the little one, this is the bigger one, which is the one I just used, and then they have two that are bigger than that. And um, if you want, you could actually, these are bags, that's why I brought them. They got broken into. It looks like something took a bite out of it. But this, these are oxygen absorbers, and if you wanted to, you could put one in there, but because it's sucking the air up, I don't really see any reason to do that. As long as it doesn't, you know, get a hole poked in it. You saw my molasses cookies that I had, they've been sealed up like that for four years, and they're still all nice and tight. So this will stay like this for a long time. And all I have to do is dump this in a pot with three quarts of water and let it cook for 15 minutes and I have a meal. And it makes so much food. I would really probably for my family cut the recipe in half because it makes so much. But until you try it the first time, you don't know how much it's really gonna make. Okay, did you understand that? Now, something else about this is you can seal, um, the bags from the like from the Bishop's Storehouse. This is one that we did today. It did not suck the air out of it very good. I think because the bag is so big and it's only that full. Um, so probably if I was going to be using these, I would put oxygen absorbers in these. But you can take these big ones and you can actually make them smaller. This is a fourth size one. So this is a perfect size for seasons. So I can just put my seasons in there, seal it up, and. You know, they will last for a long, long time. Yeah. Do these have a bigger problem with the vegetables poking holes? No, they do not have as much of a problem with that. They're thicker and they just hold better. Now, just know that anything that's stored in these kinds of bags or these kinds of bags, they are not rodent proof. Bugs, you know, um, some big bugs and some rodent and rodents will definitely still can eat through these. So you still have to store these in something that, you know, put them in something that animals or garments aren't going to get into. Okay, that's pretty much all of the mix of the meals class. Now, let me tell you what you're going to be trying back there tonight. There's the cookies that I already told you about. There is a cinnamon, apple cinnamon muffin and a carrot raisin muffin. There is the farmhouse soup. There is the chicken pot pie. Is there anything else? Oh, and the donut holes. So you get to try all those. So all the different mixes we showed you tonight, and there's cornbread muffins. Yeah, cornbread muffins too. So all the mixes we showed you tonight are back there for you to taste. And um, and I hope that this has inspired you to go home, want to do some mixes, want to make some meals, coordinate your stuff a little bit better. Yeah. Where do you get them home? I bought a lot of them online. I got at the church bookstore years ago. They had a whole bunch of these. These are math. These all use master mix. And they have their own master mix. There's a lot of different master mix recipes. But it has, um, I have a bread one, I have a cookie one, and I think I have one other one too. This one is muggins, so it makes like a one serving size, like you cook in a mug. You just put it in a mug and throw it in the microwave and cook a meal. It'd be like good for gifts, office gifts. Anyway, all different kinds of things. So come up, look at the books. Only, I'm, I'll leave these last. We have to clean up because the gardening class is next and they have things to set up too. So go back and eat and then come back in 15 minutes and we'll get started with the next class. And if you have any questions, come up and talk to me when I'm cleaning up.